Hi, so in this video I'm going to talk about why crime concentrates in particular places and to do that I'm going to use the routine activities theory or the routine activities approach which you might have heard of already and what this does is it tells us the ingredients that are needed for a crime opportunity now that doesn't necessarily mean that a crime will always occur when these ingredients are present because often there will be a, an unrealised opportunity but normally when a crime occurs these elements need to be present and they're sometimes referred to as the almost always elements of a crime so the first thing you need is an offender somebody who's willing and able to commit a particular offence uh, some offences might need specialist knowledge so something like bank fraud and so you've only really got a potential offender if they've got that knowledge but for lots of crimes like a fight outside a bar for example then no particular specialist knowledge is required all you need is somebody who sees committing that crime as a, a potential uh, thing for them to do and a potential action in, in particular circumstances. The second ingredient that you need is a target and you might be surprised that I didn't say victim there and there's a reason for that which is that some offences do act directly on the victim, the target is the victim. So that fight outside a bar, the target of that offence, the thing that the offender is acting on, is the victim. But for other offences, the victim might be a long way away and completely uninvolved in the crime and the offender might have no knowledge of them because what they're focused on is the target which is, for example, a laptop that's been left at home unattended um, and is the target for a residential burglary. So the second ingredient, we talk about the target, which incorporates victims, but also um, the uh, target in, in offences for which the victim isn't directly involved. And the third ingredient we need is a place for the target and the offender to come together. Now, for some offences, that place might be a virtual one, for example, an online fraud or threats done over the phone or using a messaging app. Um, but for crime mapping we're generally interested in offences that occur in physical space uh, and so that's what I'll focus on. And it's the place that's important for explaining why some, why some places have more crimes than others. And to illustrate that I've come to Nottingham here in the centre of England and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start where I'm standing now in the city centre and I'll move outwards from the city centre in two kilometre steps or roughly two kilometre steps to show how the environment changes as we move through a city and how that influences opportunities for crime. So here in the city centre there's lots of opportunities for shoplifting for example because there's lots of shops here, um, there's lots of pubs and bars so there's opportunities for, for violence. So there's a wide variety of crimes that can happen here in the city centre but there's other types of crimes, crimes that are typically rural offences or that are concentrated in residential areas like residential burglary that are much less likely to happen uh, in city centres. But as we move out from the city centre, you'll be able to see how the opportunities for crime are different in different places. So I'm now about two kilometres outside the city centre, and you can see now I'm in a completely different area. So this is quite a large housing estate um, built by the local council, um, what in American English would be called a, a housing project and um, the opportunities for crime here are going to be quite different to the opportunities for crime in the city centre. There's lots of housing, um, some flats, uh, lots of the houses are um, quite small, quite close together. Lots of opportunities here then for crimes like residential burglary, domestic violence, theft from cars, those sorts of things, and far less opportunity for the crimes that you would have got in the city centre, things like pickpocketing, um, shoplifting and so on. So I now come another two kilometres out from the city centre, so I'm four kilometres from the centre now. And you can see here, I'm still in a, in a housing estate, but it's quite a different one from the estate I was in before. The houses are bigger, more people have got cars. It's quite a lot quieter around me. There's fewer people on the street because more people move around by car than on foot or on bikes, as they did in the inner um, urban housing estate. And that will all change the opportunities for uh, crime. And if I go another two kilometres out, then I'll get into an, another environment again, because then I'll be right on the edge of the city. 
And you, as you can see, I'm in a completely different environment. I'm here right on the edge of the city, um, just where the fields surrounding the city, the rural area surrounding the city starts. And the opportunities for crime in this area are going to be completely different from the opportunities for crime in the areas we've seen before. There's very few opportunities for many crimes like residential burglary or non-residential burglary, um, pickpocketing. Uh, there's probably not going to be very many drunken fights, all those sorts of things. But there might be more opportunities for certain types of crime, things like metal theft, uh, theft of um, or damage to, to livestock and other rural crime offences. So you can see in moving uh, into this area from the other places we've been that the opportunities for crime vary enormously depending on where we are in different places. And that's why crime clusters in some places and not in others and why different crimes cluster in different places. And that's why it's important to look at crime on maps, to do spatial analysis of crime, so that we can understand where certain crimes happen and when they happen as well, um, so that we can better target police activity or crime prevention activity, other sorts of work that's being done to try to respond to crime. So in summary, for a crime to happen, an offender and a target must usually come together at a particular place. Different places provide different opportunities for that coming together of an offender and a target to happen. And that means that different crimes cluster in different places according to the opportunities for that coming together of an offender and a target that each place presents.